All right, hello there, Chemistry 2. This is the beginning of Chapter 16. Um, chapter 16 is kind of a combo meal of doing equilibrium stuff with acid-base stuff. Um, so this is going to be where we kind of start, and we're going to try to go slow here to begin, just a little acid-base review and something that we went over briefly last year but you know that's been like pretty much a million years ago so i will review the main concept that we're going to focus on in chapter 16 in terms of acids and bases uh side note if you haven't turned in your take-home test just take a picture of it and email it to me yeah email all the pictures or all the pages of it and uh, i'll get that graded for you as soon as possible Okay, so here we go. That's the basis. So there may, there's three main theories when it comes to acid and bases. And these theories are kind of have ch not really changed. There's just lots of different things that can exhibit acid or base like characteristics. The one that you guys know right now are pretty solid on is the first one called the Arrhenius acid and base theory. The Arrhenius acid base theory basically has the uh, concept of acids are things that when you throw them into water or aqueous solution, they're going to make a lot of H pluses. You guys learned this back in biology when it came to you know, proton pumps and, and, and things like that from a million years ago. Um, the when you have lots of H pluses, it's a very acidic situation. Um, the base definition is going to be for for Arrhenius types are going to be things that instead of increase H plus, they increase OH minus. Now, we did this last year in chemistry one. We we're doing titrations. We take an acid, we mix it with a base. It's called a neutralization reaction. It makes water. We will come back to this, but we're going to focus a little bit more on the next flavor of acid-base chemistry. So acids that are Arrhenius usually have H written at the beginning. Bases usually have OH written at the end. So HCl is the most popular acid that we deal with, and NaOH, sodium hydroxide, is the most popular base. Now, the next theory the acids still look like acids a lot of the times, but the bases sometimes don't look like the bases. And the second theory is called the brownson lori acid base theory. brownson lori's idea re revolves around this main idea. Um, acids are anything that can donate a proton. An H plus it's considered to be a proton. It's a hydrogen ion. So if you think about hydrogen, when hydrogen is just chilling as a neutral thing, it has one proton, one electron. If you take away the electron, then it's just a proton hanging out. So acids are things that donate protons. And with a brownson lori reaction, you have to have a base receive that proton. So Anything that can receive a proton is considered to be a brownson lori base. So for us and what you guys need to know is a lot of the times the acids are going to look the same, but a lot of the times the bases are going to look different. So we're going to spend some time figuring that out. Now, there is a chart on page uh, 674 in your book for those of you that came and got books the other day that is posted right here. And I'll teach you guys how to read this chart today the uh this chart helps you figure out in a brownsell lori reaction who the acid who the base is okay so here is a, a reaction with hcl and h2o you might be looking at that and being like well why is h2o written in this reaction we really just usually dissolve stuff into h2o well h2o is written in this reaction because uh, in a brown lori reaction, you have to have somebody classified as the acid, somebody classified as the base. Here's another reaction that might mess with you a little bit. We have NH3 plus H2O. So once again, uh, you'd be thinking, all right, H2O must be kind of important here. And here's the big key. The big key is sometimes 
things that are acids in one reaction might be a base in another reaction. And that's what this little chart here is going to show you. Like I said, I'll flip the screen here so I can show you on the board how this works. So water is what we call amphoteric. Amphoteric just means that you can be an acid or a base, depends on what you're reacting with. So in brass little reactions, you're not just kind of pigeonholed into this, you are always an acid or you are always a base. You are an acid or a base, depending on what you're hanging out with, what you're trying to react with. Okay. So that's going to be our goal to start here. We're going to flip this here and I'm going to, oops, screw this up. All right. So here's our little chart here. Um, it's probably going to be very difficult for you to see these things. So on the slides, I will, uh, you'll be able to steal this little chart off of the slides, copy this image, and uh, maybe put it in your notes or whatnot. But the basic idea is this, all right? This column right here, this is your acid column. And this column right here is your base. Now, the acid column works like this. Anything that is up here is a stronger acid than anything that's down here. So for example, HCl, which is at the top of this list, is stronger than every other acid below it. So if it, HCl is going to react with something and you have both of these things in the same column, even though they're in the same column, the HCl will always be the acid and whatever it's reacting with will be classified as the base. Okay. The base chart is the exact opposite. The base chart works like this. Everything at the bottom of the base chart is a stronger base than anything up here. So at the bottom of this chart is a chemical called CH3 minus. Now, if CH3 reacts with anything in this column here, it's going to be the base and whatever it's reacting with is going to be the acid. Now, there are some things that just won't react, they won't work. But uh, for the examples that we'll do, we'll try to make sure that uh, they work out nice, okay? So here's how this is going to work with our HCl. So we have HCl. Now let's go ahead and circle it over there. It's up at the top. And then we have H2O in this same column right there. Based on this idea, HCl, because it's higher in the acid column, is what we would call the acid. And H2O is going to be the base. Now, here's how you write the reactions. Everybody's really good at writing the products when it comes to just looking at the formulas. People are really bad at positives and negatives. That's kind of where um, this little chart will help you out quite a bit because if you don't see it on this chart, it probably doesn't exist for the most part for us. So here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna take H, this H right here because it is an acid, and it is going to go and combine with the H2O. So not only is it going to be transferring an H, it's also going to take a positive charge. So you have to pay attention to charges here. So if we take the H away from HCl, that means Cl is all that we have left over. But if we take a positive charge away from HCl, which is normally neutral, then that means that the leftovers have to be negative. And if you're wondering, you know, like, uh, man, do I write the charge? Do I not write the charge? A lot of times on this little chart here, the thing that it's across from is going to be, uh, is going to have the correct charge. So in this case, HCl is located here, Cl minus is located there. It's a bit of a cheat code. Okay. So that's one of our products. The other product is going to be not H2O, but it will be H3O because it's, three H's and one O now instead of two. But if we're bringing a positive charge to something that's neutral, it has to have a positive charge as well. And if you look closely enough on this chart, when you uh, get it in, in your notes or whatnot, um, you'll see that it has a H3O positive is, is listed up here. So those are the products of that brown lowry reaction. In the other brown lowry reaction, we'd have to look at the other sides. We're gonna look at the base side because I see NH3, and I'll just go ahead and change colors here. So we'll go purple, so purple is beautiful. We have H2O and we have NH3. So in this reaction, 
on the base side, since the NH3 is lower on the base side, it's going to be the base and H2O is going to be the acid. Don't worry about this one having a single arrow and this one having a double arrow for right now. That's a problem for future us. We'll get to that in a little bit. I'll show you how to do that probably in our next lesson. So in this reaction, instead of being the base, water is the acid. So what happens is, is it takes its H and it gives it to the NH3. It takes an H and a positive charge. So instead of being NH3, we're going to have NH4. And because it was neutral and now it got a positive charge, it's going to be NH4 plus. And then we have the leftover. So if you were H2O and you lost an H and you lost a positive charge, your leftovers would be OH and a minus charge there. Like I said, if you look close enough on this chart, you're going to see all that business there. Okay. So these are a couple of what I would say are easier examples. And I'll give you guys a couple of cheat codes when it comes to your final answers, making sure that your answers are written correctly. Uh, but that's the idea behind Brown's and Lori acid base chemistry. So we're going to flip the slide here and we're going to get some reps. Uh, we're going to try to anyway. Okay. So reps with Brown's and Lori acids and bases. So we're going to keep our same chart up here. Once again, it'll be easier if you kind of copy that into your notes or blow that up a little bit or just have the book handy with you. But I'll try to highlight where things are. And I'm kind of making this up on the fly. So um, we're going to do uh, some weird ones. So let's do a weird one here. Let's do HSO4 minus, which is located right there on the acid side. And then let's have that react with, uh, let's go ahead and do, I don't know, HCO3 minus, okay? So is this a legal reaction? Yeah, sure, it's a legal reaction for us uh, as we're just kind of introducing this topic. But the idea is this, we have to identify who's the acid, who's the base, and I'll just go ahead and circle H3, HCO3 minus for you there. So on our acid side, things that are higher are more acid light. So that thing's gonna be the acid and that thing is gonna be the base even though it's written on the acid side. That's how we write these. So this would obviously be a couple of things that are amphoteric, sometimes they're acid, sometimes they're bases and that's why we have to use this chart. So this is how, I'll go ahead and move this over so we can hopefully, I don't know if you can see that, you can't, of course you can't see that. HSO4, just so we don't run out of room here, right on our chart. Okay, so we say this is the acid, this is the base. The acid's going to take its H, it's going to move it over here. And this is the part where like math with integers is kind of important. So we're going to go ahead and write the formula. So if that's HCO3 and we gain an H, it's now going to be H2CO3. So, here, like I said, here's where you have to do math with integers. If you were a negative charge and you gained a positive charge, a positive and negative will cancel each other out and make you neutral. Therefore, your formula is H2CO3. CO, uh, CO3. Um, if you look closely, it's located right there on that chart. So that's one of our products. The other product is going to be whatever the leftovers of this chemical is. So SO4 minus or HSO4 minus, if you lose the H, you're gonna be SO4. If you lose a positive charge and you were already a negative one, losing another positive would make you a negative two. Now, pro tip, here's how you guys can kind of see if you totally screwed up the math with integers here or if you're on the right track. The idea is this. The total charge on the reactant side will equal the total charge on the product side if you do it right. So that is to say, a negative one and a negative one combines to a negative two. And neutral and a negative two combines to a negative two. So there you have it. You probably did it right. Okay, let's do another one. And I'll show you what happens. And this is going to be, I mean, what I think is obvious, especially doing online learnings like a side note, if you are struggling with this, send me an email or whatnot, and we can figure this stuff out. Learning this stuff online 
is obviously a new challenge for us. It's, it's a challenge for me teaching it. It's a challenge for you guys learning it. Um, I'm used to um, seeing people in here ignore me. And so, uh, you know, seeing nobody ignore me here, hopefully, you know, maybe some of you guys are ignoring me out there. So that just make sure we're staying consistent. All right. So uh, with, with this next example that we're going to do here, I'll just do this one real quick. Let's try H2S and F minus. Okay. So a couple of pro tips here. In order to be a Brown's Lowry acid, you have to have an H because you got to be able to transfer that. So when you have a situation that looks like this, you don't even need the chart to figure out who's the acid or who's the base. Although we could use it to figure out who's the acid, who's the base. Here's what I mean. H2S is located right here, and it is only located on that side, on the acid side. Okay. And F minus, who doesn't even have an H, is located right here. It's only located on the base side. So if you're wondering, oh, if they're not in the same column, what am I supposed to do? Well, what you're supposed to do is just kind of look at what column that they exist in, and that's your answer. If you're only in the acid side, you got to be the acid. If you're only in the base side, you got to be the base. Okay? So we'll go ahead and complete this. We have H taking, going over to the F minus. So if F gains an H, it's now HF. If you have a positive and negative, they cancel out and they make HF, which is, once again, on the chart. Always look on the chart and see if you have the charges written correctly. If H2S loses an H, the leftovers would be HS. If H2S loses a positive charge and an H, then it's going to go from neutral to a negative, which is located right there. There's HS minus. So check and see if you're right. The total charge on the left is a negative one. The total charge on the right is a negative one. We probably did it right. We have all these products written up here. Use this chart. It is your friend. Okay. So that's kind of some examples of using Browns and Lowry acids and bases with this chart, especially when it's amphoteric. How would you do this without a chart? You probably wouldn't. Honestly, you probably wouldn't. It'd be very difficult for you. So we're not going to worry about doing it without a chart. Okay. All right. So to continue with Brown's and Lowry re reactions and whatnot, because we have entered the pain train that is equilibrium chemistry, we kind of have to understand how these types of reactions are going to work. And they're going to work a little bit differently than they did in chapter four, I think, is when we did strong acid, strong base reactions. So when there's a brown lowry reaction, it is in equilibrium. What you have to understand is that a reaction that's in equilibrium is going to have forward and reverse reactions. So you're going to have proton transfers in both directions. Case in point. The NH3H2O example that we had earlier. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write out the products of this with the double arrows, and I'm going to show you guys how this works and how we classify this. Okay, so let's see here. All right. So from the previous example, we would look up on the chart and we said that NH three is the base and we said water was the acid. Now here's the deal. If this is the acid and it is going to give its proton to the NH3, okay? Over here, these these products because they it's an equilibrium reaction can go and react back and what happens is they'll reach a nice balance where the forward and the reverse reactions are equal. So what you have to see here is that to get these things, the NH4 is going to be able to give that proton back to the OH minus. And that's kind of the idea between the equilibrium here. So these things have special names. Their name is conjugate pairs. So what we would do here is we would say the base reacts with the acid 
this thing that kind of looks like the base, we would call the conjugate acid because it gives its proton back to the conjugate base. That's the idea behind conjugate pairs. Conjugate pair is something that differs from each other by one proton. So they differ from each other by an H and a positive charge. That's the idea behind conjugate pairs. So conjugate pairs in this reaction would be NH3 and NH4 plus. And second conjugate pair would be H2O and OH minus. That's the idea behind conjugate pairs. So if you're asked to identify those down the road, that's what's happening. And once again, just restate, this is a reaction that comes to equilibrium. So we have the Ford reaction occurring. And if the reverse reaction is going to have to occur, then somebody's going to have to give the proton back. That's why NH4 is considered to be a conjugate acid. Okay. So conjugate pairs differ from each other by a proton, by a proton. And basically the idea is this, they're going to look very similar to each other. They're going to be different by an H and a positive charge. So somebody's going to have an extra positive charge. So I'm going to have uh, uh, one less positive charge, which sometimes makes them negative like it did in this case. So that's the idea behind Brown's and Lurie reactions. And um, we'll do some examples on that later. Okay. The third type of reaction, which um, pretty much in my chemistry career, I guess, I haven't really dealt with a heck of a lot. You really don't deal with these things a heck of a lot compared to the first two. It's called the Lewis acid base, acid and base reaction. Um, what a Lewis acid and base is defined as instead of anything about H's, anything about protons, anything about positive charges, it's about electron pair receivers and donors. And, you know, for us, um, wh why did this even become a thing? Well, it became a thing because, you know, the Lewis dot structure guy, his name is Gilbert Lewis. He, a uh, uh, smart dude, figured out lots of things in the world of chemistry, but basically started noticing that when you put certain things in water, even though they don't follow the traditional Arrhenius or Browns and Lori, they st definitions they still made acids and bases. So, for example, um, BH3 is an example of a Lewis acid. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones. If you take like iron 2 plus or iron 3 plus ions, you throw them into water, it makes it an acidic solution. So, uh, awesome. That's great. Good to know, Lewis. Thanks for your, thanks for your time there. Uh, so here's going to be your assignment. Uh, I'll post something on Classroom, and uh, it'll be posted in their classwork. And all I want you guys to do is to use that chart on slide four to help you write the products of the following reactions. Um, these five reactions are going to be listed for you. I th think that all of the charges are good. That little negative charge is kind of small on this slide, so um, please pay attention to that. Uh, what your final answers have to have is they have to have the formulas written correctly in terms of numbers of stuff and also charges. So how do we do that? We use that little chart. We try to identify who the acid, the base is. We give, we take the acid and have it donate an H and a positive charge and write the products accordingly. Okay. So that's going to be our goal. That's going to be your first assignment here. Like I said, this will all be posted on Classroom uh, with the slideshow as well, so you can get that chart. All right. Until next time. Later.